Great glowing day, Adam's children. Welcome to this week's sermon, which is a retreatment of all the non-revolver pistols in the Fallout series. Kinda. Sorta. We examine the lore, the quirks, the real-life inspirations, and interesting behind-the-scenes information for this core group of Fallout weapons. If you think I missed one, check out my Revolvers of Fallout video. It is probably in there. Otherwise, I love seeing comments with really good information that I may have missed. So, Crank up the rads and get ready to draw as we take a unique look at the pistols of Fallout. Let's start this list with one of the most well-known pistols in the entire Fallout franchise, one that spans almost every single Fallout game to date, and see how it changes with each iteration. I went back and forth about including this one in my video on revolvers, because if you look closely at the in-game model of the 10mm pistol in the first Fallout, you can see a cylinder, one that would be loaded and cycled each time the trigger is pulled. However, as we will see, the 10mm will vary quite a bit in its design throughout the games. Officially known as the Colt 6520 10mm pistol, it is a very common weapon, being one of the weapons that the player will start with at the beginning of the first Fallout, stepping out into the cave, where you'll likely waste all your 10mm ammo, firing and missing, at rats in a cave that uh, we really should just be able to run past. Stupid friggin' rats. The pistol design does not look much like anything from the real world. However, it is an absolute one-for-one -one copy of a pistol that can be seen on the cover of a 1990s comic book miniseries called Hard Boiled. It really is a one-for-one, -one, from the barrel shape to the cylinder, even to the kind of strange-looking brown grip-like part under the barrel. Doing between 5 and 12 damage with a decent magazine size and AP cost, this makes it a solid early game weapon, but it quickly falls behind many other weapons as the game progresses. It's also a very common weapon to find. You can encounter it in almost every area and by almost all groups except for the highest level ones like super mutants. What is interesting is that although it is very obviously a revolver, the weapon description very clearly states that the weapon auto reloads after each shot until the magazine is empty. In the Fallout Bible, Volume 8, a fan asked why there seemed to be this discrepancy, and one of the Fallout designers, Chris Taylor, said that there was some miscommunication that led to the artwork and the item description mismatch, and the description was just never updated. The pistol shows up in Fallout 2 exactly as it does in the first Fallout. Same damage, very commonly found, it's all just more the same really, and Fallout 2 doesn't really add anything new or interesting to the lore. Fallout Tactics completely skips the 10mm pistol, but the next time we see it is in full 3D glory in Fallout 3. Technically this is a different model, perhaps an entirely different gun from the Colt in the first Fallouts, since it is called the N99, and except for the square and blocky shape, it doesn't really look all that similar either. Fallout 3's 10mm doesn't seem to pull inspiration strongly from any single real-world weapon. Although, if we were forced to pick one, the slide, the part that moves back and forth while firing, is reminiscent of a Desert Eagle because of its shape, how large it is, and how similar it looks when it's in the open position. Why the pistol appears to be so front-heavy is unknown, and I find the small, cylinder-looking thing on the very bottom to be very puzzling. The shape almost reminds me of a small CO2 cylinder, the kind used for paintball, airsoft, or something like that. I would really like to hear your best guess as to what this thing could be used for. A terminal in Fallout 3 gives us some background, telling us that the N99 was adopted as the military's standard issue pistol starting in 2051, when the older N80 pistol was phased out. Now we don't know anything about the N80 or what it looked like. I would kind of like to imagine that it was similar to the Colt 10mm pistol from the earlier fallouts, just changed a bit to meet the military's requirements and therefore given a new designation. That's headcanon, but that would tie things together pretty nicely. Apparently, the N99 was built well and with high quality materials because they are noted to be quite durable, and if any maintenance or restoration needs to be done, they are apparently easy to get working again. This is the reason why the 10mm is so common in the Capital Wasteland. 
even after 200 years of use and neglect that would come in the chaos of the post-war period. Doing 9 base damage, no extra critical damage, and having decent item health and magazine size, just like in the earlier fallouts, it is a very useful weapon early on, but again, it just gets outclassed pretty quickly. Also, just like in Fallout 1, this can be the first actual firearm that the player can get from Amada as they are escaping Vault 101 at the end of Fallout 3's tutorial. Fallout 3 has a few unique variants that I find interesting. One less common variant can be found early on, creatively called the Silenced 10mm. A large silencer is attached to the already chonky 10mm, making it a suppressed weapon, so killing an enemy with one hit will not alert nearby enemies, and it benefits by an increased number of sneak criticals. In exchange, it degrades more quickly and does one point less damage per shot. But this is a very useful early game weapon for stealth builds, and can be found in several locations, but most notably is the weapon of choice for Mr. Burke. Tenpenny's slimy right-hand man who gets off on nuking Megaton. The other unique 10mm that is kind of attainable by the player is wielded by Colonel Autumn, one of the leaders of the Enclave in the DC area. Autumn can be seen carrying and using his 10mm when the Enclave capture Project Purity, as well as at Raven Rock during Autumn's short-lived interrogation of the player character. The Fallout 3 official game guide says that the pistol is available as loot in the interrogation room at Raven Rock after the player is released by President Eden. This is false, but perhaps the pistol was meant to be found at this point in the game because the very next time and last time that we see the good colonel is when the Brotherhood retakes Project Purity and he has replaced his 10mm with a laser pistol. The only way to get the pistol is pretty janky. After the radiation blast, when the Enclave takes Project Purity, where your dad dies and Autumn almost dies, if you go into third person and turn the camera around right next to the wall, you can get a search prompt to look through Autumn's inventory, and his pistol can be looted. His pistol is much better than any other 10mm variant, doing 4 more damage than the normal 10mm. The other variants are the so-called Sim version, which is the Operation Anchorage weapon that is given so much health it is functionally invincible, and there is a silenced version as well. One version can only be used by Butch Deloria, and is mostly the same as the average 10mm, with slightly modified stats to action points, cost, and weight. The leader of the Regulators, Sonora Cruz, has her own 10mm that does 100 damage per shot. Holy crap and it is worth an absolutely ludicrous sum as well. Too bad it's only accessible with console commands. Even better though, this high power, super valuable 10mm is never used, because although she's the leader of a group hellbent on bringing evil people to heal, she always flees in combat and never uses her weapon. Behold, the fearless leader that is ridding the wastes of evil. Bravo. The last version is a cut one called the Steel Alloy Pistol that has a different color and was maybe intended to be a more durable version than the vanilla, but we're not for sure. And the Silence 10mm had a cut alloy steel version as well. The 10mm pistol shows up in Fallout New Vegas almost exactly as it did in Fallout 3, but the damage has been adjusted to work with the way that New Vegas creatures and weapons are balanced. It is less durable, but with how common the weapon is, keeping one in good condition is pretty easy. Like every game before, the pistol is a good beginning weapon. It's easy to find, but Fallout New Vegas also lets us modify the pistol for the first time in the series. Extended mags will let you shoot more between reloads. The silencer mod changes the pistol to operate just like the silenced 10mm in Fallout 3. And the pistol laser sight decreases the spread by half but does not actually produce a laser dot for aiming. Boo. This mod is also interesting because it replaces the cylinder below the barrel, so it seems that this thing is not necessary for the pistol to function. These are great upgrades to this futuristic looking pistol, and when all mods are attached to the weapon, this already quite bulky pistol gets even more ridiculous. Seriously, can you imagine trying to hold and fire this thing? There was one cut upgrade called the Heavy Duty Frame which would have probably increased the pretty low item HP, increasing durability. There is one unique variant that was introduced with the Courier's Stash add-on called the Weathered 10mm. 
The name would seem to imply that it is old, weaker, and in a worse condition than the standard 10mm, but that is not the case. It does more damage than the vanilla 10mm and is substantially more durable as well. Maybe it being weathered wasn't meant to hint at that it's in worse condition and therefore less effective. Maybe this was a particularly good 10mm and so has seen regular use for a very long time, making it look and feel more weathered. It looks different as well, looking cleaner and looks weathered, I guess, if you look at spots like the slide where it seems like the small indentation has been rubbed off or something. I don't know, it doesn't really look all that weathered to me. There's only one in the game, and since it was introduced with the courier stash, it is automatically given to the player at the start of the game, making it one of the first firearms the player will receive, just like in the first Fallout and Fallout 3. Are we, uh... Are we sensing a trend here yet? Where the normal 10mm requires 25 points in the gun skill to use effectively, this one requires zero. And that, combined with its availability at the beginning of the game, means that this pistol was the courier's trusty sidearm during their pre-platinum chip life. You know, before they were shot in the head, had their organs removed, had a conversation with their own brain, and ultimately helped decide the fate of the Mojave. <sighs> The good old days. One really great design choice on the part of the developers was a deliberate choice to have the 10mm pistols much more common in vaults, as Josh Sawyer himself said that he thought the 10mm pistols were just more futuristic and vaulty, and I'm inclined to agree. The potential companion Veronica also has her own 10mm pistol that only she can equip. The 10mm gets its final redesign in Fallout 4, and it is close enough in appearance that it is recognizable as the 10mm pistol that we all know and a dozen of you love, but it is quite different too. The pistol is chunkier than ever, it is less blocky and more rounded, and it's gotten... girthy. We don't get any explanation for the change other than, generally speaking, nearly everything in Fallout 4 got a facelift and redesign, for better or for worse. Stat-wise, it's just like all the other versions. It's not the weakest pistol, nor is it the strongest, but it makes for a very solid early game weapon. The 10mm is once again the first firearm the player will usually encounter, since two can be looted in Vault 111 prior to exiting, along with a bunch of ammo, showing that, similar to New Vegas, the 10mm seemed to be a standard issue for vault Tech. The pistol, like nearly all weapons in Fallout 4, can accept a truly impressive number of mods between mods for the receiver, barrel, sights, grip, muzzle, and magazine, there are an impressive 35 possible mods. They run the gamut from making it more effective at long range, becoming a realistic full auto option with an extended magazine, and really anything in between. What I find most interesting is that with how different the pistol looks in Fallout 4, we can make it look like the pistol in Fallout 3 in New Vegas. Simply attaching the so-called long barrel, wink wink, modification gives the pistol the exact same look, even with the small cutout near the end of the barrel and the CO2 cartridge looking thing at the bottom. Of course, the slide and grip still look different and no mods will really change that, but I think there is a lore friendly way to explain this. Since we can upgrade the pistol to look extremely similar to the Fallout 3 variant, it's not unreasonable to assume that the pistol was always able to be upgraded and modified, but the standard military configuration was with the so-called long barrel, and that is why it is the only version found in 3 in New Vegas. Alternatively, this upgradable version could be a revision or updated form of the N99 that was used just before the Great War. Either way, I think it can work with the established lore. There's one unique version in the base game called Wastelander's Friend, which is only available for purchase from the merchant Deb from Bunker Hill, and does bonus damage to limbs. There are several Creation Club versions which doesn't make them canon per se, but they are at least worth mentioning. The so-called Gen 4 10mm has the long barrel to look like the older style 10mm, but is mostly black instead of gunmetal grey. The classic 10mm was created to look extremely close to the Colt 10mm from Fallout and Fallout 2, and it does a good job. And for some reason, it's included in a mission associated with the Tunnel Snakes from Fallout 3. It does a good deal more damage than the vanilla 10mm, and costs more AP to use in VATS as well. Among all the classic 10mms introduced as part of the Creation Club quest, 
there is one unique one called Ultimatum, which removes the wood furniture and has several engravings all over, including a nuclear symbol and a clover, just to name a few. There are a bunch on this thing, as well as some short sentences, the best of which are the words, look here, right on the front under the barrel. Since the Creation Club models are officially owned by Bethesda, I would love to see the Colt 10mm design be included in a future game. I mean, you have it already, just give it to us Bethesda. Fallout 76 uses the same 10mm that we see in Fallout 4, and after update 1.0.85, the player is given the pistol and some ammo right before they leave Vault 76. It seems like this is a Fallout canon event at this point, that we need to start every game with a 10mm pistol, otherwise, can we really say that we're playing a Fallout game? If we thought 38 upgrade options was insane in Fallout 4, Fallout 76 just laughs in our face and throws 53 potential mods our way. And that's not even counting the paints that we can apply to the weapon. One thing I found interesting, the barrel mod that made the 10mm look like the Fallout 3 version used the long barrel mod in Fallout 4, but in Fallout 76 the mod is now called the short barrel mod. So like, which one is it? Although it is a little flashy, I do like the gilded paint. It certainly catches the eye and is kind of interesting. There are two unique variants, the anti-scorched training pistol, which is given to the player when starting the quest into the fire. It cannot be upgraded like the normal 10 mm and has a special anti-scorched effect, which does 25 more damage to scorched, but there is a minus 20% effect when shooting anything else. Although it says it shoots ultrasight ammo, when using it, it only consumes regular 10mm rounds and the bullets leave a faint blue trail when they are fired. Another variant, if we can even call it that, is Circuit Breaker, which was introduced in the Atlantic City update and has an awesome art deco paint job and technically is actually an energy weapon since it fires fusion cells and does energy damage. I'm kind of torn calling this a variant, but it's too interesting not to talk about because it has an effect where the last shot in the magazine will deal area of effect damage that will also stun the target. While also benefiting from a slightly faster reload, it will ignore 50% of the target's armor, but it doesn't have as many mods. I would love to know how we're shoving fusion cells into that skinny magazine. And I must admit the large glass tube on the front looks pretty great. And overall the weapon is really cool and looks really unique when you fire it. Fallout Tactics is the first time we see the Browning High Power Pistol. And like many weapons and tactics, it looks just like the Browning High Power in real life. And it's just called that in the game as well. The pistol is okay. Even in the early game doing base damage in the range of seven to 12, with a decent capacity, but for some reason it weighs six freaking pounds in the game. On average, a real unloaded high power weighs a bit more than two pounds, so the weight must be the way it is for game balance reasons. The weird thing about this weapon is that it is inferior in most ways to the starting pistol, which is the M9FS Beretta, so there really is no real reason to pick this pistol up and use it, unless you're like a fan of the weapon in real life, I guess. The in-game description says that the high power was produced in Belgium, which is true in our world, where the Belgian army adopted the pistol after 1935. The most interesting part of the description states that the North American models of the weapon became popular again in the 2010s in the Fallout world. We don't see another pistol that is explicitly named as Browning High Power, but we have two pistols in Fallout New Vegas that are modeled directly off the high power, and therefore we are talking about them here. The weapon simply called the 9mm pistol is quite common in New Vegas, as is the 9mm ammo that it fires. Although it does less damage than the 10mm, it is more durable, with all the other stats being quite similar. This is a super accessible weapon in the early game, since it has a low strength requirement and a zero guns skill requirement to fully utilize it and is a very solid early game choice when facing low level unarmored enemies. It gets two potential modifications, the extended mags, which increase the number of shots in each magazine, and a pistol scope, which is an unusual upgrade for a semi-automatic pistol since it requires a large scope mount that attaches to the frame rather than the slide which reciprocates with each shot. The magnification isn't very high, but this certainly is a unique upgrade amongst non-revolver pistols. D 
Dean Domino, one of the NPCs from Dead Money, uses a 9mm as his primary sidearm, one of the very few named NPCs to do so. The unique variant named Maria is better than the vanilla 9mm in every way, with zero downsides. Not only is it better, but it looks great as well. It has intricate engravings along the frame and slide, and custom mother of pearl grips with a stylized painting of the Virgin of Guadalupe. On the slide we can see that the pistol is made by M&A Gun Manufacturers, a company that only exists in the Fallout universe, who we also know makes binoculars and trail carbine scopes. This is a special weapon, not just because it looks great, nor because it effortlessly outclasses the normal 9mm, but because it is the favored weapon of the antagonist of Fallout New Vegas, at least for the first half of the game. Benny, the scheming Rat Pack leader of the chairman who runs the Tops Casino, can be seen using this gun to shoot the courier in the beginning cinematics of the game. And so the only way to get Maria is by getting it from Benny. One option is to pickpocket him while in the Tops Casino, in which case there is a possibility of getting two of this weapon, because later on when the player confronts Benny at Kaisar's tent, killing Benny will give the player another chance to loot the pistol off of his body. The only way that Maria won't be available for looting is if the player decides to let Benny be crucified, but all other choices gives the player a chance to get it. Obtaining Maria and then executing Benny with it by shooting him in the head is the purest form of irony and the only way I think Benny should die, and killing him with his own weapon will reward the player with the achievement talk about owned, which is honestly pretty awesome. The last variant of the 9mm is the most beastly of all, one that is whispered about in the dark corners of the Mojave and strikes fear in the hearts of everyone. It is known as the Debug Mega Pistol. The Mega Pistol does more damage than any other in the game at 9,999 damage per shot, but other than the increased durability, everything else is the same. It's only available through console commands or by making blood sacrifice to Oog Qualtoth, whichever you prefer. And it's honestly pretty fun to play around with for a little while. Fallout 4 gives us a pistol design that we have not seen yet in the Fallout universe, and it is known in-game as the Deliverer. The Deliverer is nearly a one-for-one -one copy of the real-world Walter PPK pistol, complete with a suppressor. The PPK was made popular in pop culture, since it was the premier choice of James Bond in the 007 movies. It is appropriate then that the Deliverer is only accessible by working with the railroad in Fallout 4. It is a unique weapon, so no other pistols look like this, and it's chambered in 10mm just like the 10mm pistol. This is problematic because it is a very small pistol that was not made to fire such a large round in real life since it was chambered in 380 ACP and therefore a more appropriate although not exact match in Fallout 4 would have been for it to use 38 caliber ammo. It gets even more interesting though since the magazine has 32 caliber written on it which is not an ammunition option in Fallout 4 but it was in Fallout 3. The choice to use 10mm was likely a balanced choice, but it vastly outperforms the 10mm pistol in most areas. It does more damage, has a faster fire rate and greater accuracy, although it has worse range which makes sense given how small the pistol is. On paper, it requires more action points in VATS, but it has two effects. Improved VATS hit chance, but also 25% less action point cost, which actually makes it less AP hungry than the 10mm. The Deliverer is one of my favorite pistols in the game, as it is very effective in the early game and still has its uses in the mid game and has 21 potential modifications which is still quite good, even if it's not as much as the 10mm. The Deliverer is given to the player after completing the Tradecraft quest, which has the player going with Deacon to the switchboard, a previous headquarters of the railroad, to recover an experimental prototype that was left behind. Deacon will refer to it as a hand cannon, which the deliverer is basically the exact opposite of a hand cannon, and I can't tell if Deacon is just being facetious or not. The deliverer actually has somewhat of a background. It was apparently restored by Tinker Tom to be given to the agent Tommy Whispers, who was found dead at the switchboard. Why Tinker Tom put the effort into restoring this particular weapon, I have no idea, but we're all the better for it. There's one other version of the Deliverer, but it is Creation Club content, known as the Silver Sidearm. It has a unique and intricate grip 
and stat-wise is identical to the Deliverer, but it has zero legendary effects, which are a big reason why the Deliverer can be so good in the first place. So the Silver Sidearm is not much else but something cool to look at. One of the most well-known weapons due to its unique operation, unique looks, and use of very large cartridges is the Desert Eagle, which has been included in a number of Fallout games. It was first seen in the first Fallout and looks just like the real-world nickel-plated Desert Eagle, or Deagle as it's affectionately called. Chambered in the 44 Magnum, which is a round the real-world pistol can be found in, it does a goodly amount of damage between 10 and 16 base, and a middling but serviceable capacity at 8, making it useful into the mid-game, but the cracks start to show in the late game. Because it is more powerful, it is not as common, although it is a popular choice for Brotherhood of Steel scribes for some reason, and the weapon of choice for notable NPCs like Killian Darkwater, the mayor of Junktown, and Garl, the leader of the Khans. In the Fallout 1 demo, the Desert Eagle is one of the weapons included but is called the Magnum Pistol. The weapon is also found in Fallout 2 in the exact same way, with one notable difference being that it can be upgraded with an extended magazine, pushing the capacity to 20 rounds, which is freaking absurd. I can only imagine how heavy this thing would be. The upgrade can be done by Valerie in Vault City, Skeeter in Gecko, or Algernon at New Reno Arms. It also has competition in Fallout 2 since the 44 Magnum is another pistol that is chambered in 44. Really, the Deagle has greater capacity and range, while the 44 Mag has higher damage and lower AP cost, so it just really depends on your use case when deciding on which one to use. Something I find interesting is that one of the principal developers of the first Fallout, Chris Taylor, had a big influence on what weapons were made for the game. He openly admitted that he chose to include the Deagle because it was one of his favorite weapons and noted that the 9mm Mauser pistol and the Deagle were the only two real-world weapons that were included in the first Fallout. Because he had always envisioned that weapon development had evolved differently in the Fallout world. Indeed, the weapons description calls the Desert Eagle Ancient which gives us insight into how the Fallout universe viewed a weapon that in our world was developed in the late 70s and early 80s. The description also mentioned that due to the popularity of the weapon in movies in the late 20th century, it was one of the most popular handguns of all time, which is quite the claim. The Deagle shows up again in Fallout Tactics with an updated image, but the full name is Desert Eagle Mark 19 44 caliber. It has similar stats, just slightly lower AP cost, and does a bit more damage, and once again is a great mid-game weapon that is easy to feed because of the availability of 44 mag ammo. It's not super rare, being carried by many people or available to loot in a number of locations. The high point of the Fallout series, otherwise known as Fallout Brotherhood of Steel, is the last game that included the Deagle. Yep, Brotherhood of Steel was such a stinker that it killed off the Deagle as it hasn't been seen in any of Bethesda's games. Once again, it's a good mid-game weapon and looks just like how we would expect, the in-game model being a blue color like so many of the weapons in Brotherhood of Steel. And what is a first for the series? The player can actually dual wield the Deagle, although you have to specifically find the dual desert eagles. You can't just pick up a single Deagle and then you find another one later and equip both to dual wield. Deagles are found mostly in Carbon and Los where they are most effective against the enemies in those early to mid-game levels. Fallout New Vegas gave us quite a curious pistol, one known as the Silenced 22. This weapon is quite specialized and needs to be used correctly in order to be effective. Pulling it out and trying to use it like any other pistol will most likely leave you disappointed. That is because it does a pretty weak 9 points of damage since it fires the very modest 22 long rifle round. The secret to this weapon though is its critical damage since it has a times 3 critical multiplier and 18 base critical damage. This combined with the quick rate of fire and the integrated silencer means that it can quickly put down soft targets while being very stealthy. The weapon is based off the real world Ruger 2245, the primary difference being that the Fallout version has an integrated silencer. The weapon is not that rare, although I wouldn't call it common either. But a cool thing about it is that any player, regardless of their build, can sneak one into the no-gun zones like casinos. This is because it is a holdout weapon, 
but it doesn't require any investment into the sneak skill to successfully sneak into casinos. There's a unique ammo type for 22 long rifle called the 22 long rifle plinking ammo type, which does 15% less damage in exchange for being very easily found. I just love how we have ammo types like full metal jacket, hollow point, armor piercing, and then plinking, plink, plink. To be fair though, that is the most accurate way to describe shooting a 22. Fallout Tactics does what it does best and loves to include real world weapons into the game. Same design, name, everything. The Calico M950 is no different. It is based entirely on the real world weapon, but what makes it so interesting is that this pistol, and I know it doesn't really look like one, more on that in a bit, has a helical magazine that can hold 50 rounds. This magazine, which looks like a cylinder on top of the weapon, feeds bullets that are held in a spiral shape, and due to this configuration and the length of the magazine, it has the highest capacity of any pistol. The in-game model looks like a combination of the real-world Calico M950 pistol and the M900 carbine, having the shorter barrel of the pistol, but the adjustable stock of the carbine, with an ability to change between single-shot and triple-shot modes. The actual damage is decent between 7 to 14, but what makes this weapon special isn't its damage, but its ability to throw down a lot of rounds quickly with the three round burst, large magazine, and plentiful 9mm ammo. It is not common, but it can be found carried by guards in Junction City, as well as the Hermit Special Encounter. Another cool historical weapon that we can see in the Fallout series harkens back to the very first Fallout, and is known in game as the Mauser M96 9mm. Visually, the weapon is identical to the real-world Mauser C96, and more specifically the C96 Red 9, otherwise known as the 1916 Prussian Contract, because this is a very old weapon design. It was first produced in 1896 and was used by various countries and empires, many of which no longer exist, but we know for a fact it's that specific model because the in-game description mentions the Fallout weapon using the 9x19mm Parabellum round. We're left to wonder though, since the Fallout pistol is named the M96, and the identical pistol it was inspired by is the C96, was the Fallout name a mistake? Or was it intended to show how even real-world weapons that show up virtually unchanged in Fallout still deviated a little bit from reality? At any rate, this weapon is inferior to the 10mm pistol in almost every single way, losing out in damage, capacity, and range, and only getting the edge in AP cost and shooting a very cheap round, the 9mm versus the 10mm. The only real advantage is it has a plus 20% chance to hit the target because as the description states, it is extremely accurate. It is a supremely rare weapon in the first Fallout since it can only be found on the body of Gizmo, the shady casino owner of Junktown, and that's it. In Fallout 2, one can be found at New Reno Arms, as well as a special encounter where the player runs into a super boring trader named Trader Willy. Because it's so rare, it can fetch a pretty high price of around 1,500 caps. In the game files for the first Fallout, the name of the weapon is Gizgun 1, and in the Fallout demo, it is called Gizmo's Pistol, showing just how rare this weapon was meant to be, since only Gizmo was meant to have it. It does make me wonder where and how the few people that have this gun acquired them, and I find it even more hilarious that this 19th century gun is not mentioned as being ancient in its item description, but the Desert Eagle produced in the 1980s was called ancient in its description. Fallout Tactics is the last time we see the Mauser, this one called the HSI Mauser, which seems to denote the company that produced it. But this one seems to be a different model because of the large detachable box magazine and is probably something like the M712 Schnellfeuer. It has a larger damage range from 6 to 14, shoots the same round, has a larger range than earlier games, but paradoxically has the same 7 round capacity even though it has a giant 20 round box magazine in the picture. It is still not super common, but some can be found on the first mission, Brahminwood, carried by some raiders. 
One of the things Fallout 3 loved to do was show us more of China's involvement in the US, and this gave us the opportunity to see and use the Chinese pistol. The reason I'm kind of bunching this in with the Mausers is because the Chinese pistol is a Chinese knockoff of the Mauser C96, so essentially the weapon we saw in the first two Fallouts. The interesting thing is that the real world Chinese copies of the Mausers really do exist, and they were very popular pistols since the beginning of the Chinese Republic in 1909, and arms factories were making copies of the German-made weapon by the thousands. The model that the Chinese pistol is derived from though is one called the Shanxi Type 17, with the main difference being that the Type 17 ditched the smaller 7.63mm round for the 45 ACP, and so they had to build the gun a little thicker to handle the more powerful cartridge. Since Fallout 3 doesn't have a 45 caliber ammo type, it just shoots the 10mm rounds, and this thing is absolutely pathetic. The base damage is 4, which is more than half as weak as the 10mm, with lower critical damage and no other benefit. Actually, I take that back. It can shoot double the number of rounds that the 10mm does before breaking from full condition, but that's not that great because you have to shoot double the amount of ammunition to do the same amount of damage in the first place. The Chinese pistol is the worst way to use 10mm ammunition, and I've watched people take the bullet out and snort the gunpowder, so it should only be considered if there is no other 10mm pistol option, or you're using it for roleplay reasons. There is one unique variant called the Zhurong V418 pistol that can be found at the LOB Enterprises building, which was a weapons manufacturer that was secretly working for the Chinese. They were developing a new incendiary sidearm that was called Project Zhurong and produced at least one working weapon that can be found in the CEO's briefcase before the feds figured out what they were up to and they raided the company days before the Great War. One would think that going through all this trouble to have a secret weapons manufacturer in the capital of the nation you are at war with would be producing something useful. After all, it couldn't be easy or cheap to keep an operation like that under wraps. However, the Zhu Rong is still very pitiful, still doing only 4 damage with an additional 2 fire damage for 5 seconds. This extra damage is offset though by a slower rate of fire, so the DPS is about the same as the normal Chinese pistol, which already sucks. I find this pistol interesting because there is nothing different about the Zhurong that would indicate how it is able to deal fire damage with each shot since it uses the same ammo. The name, Zhurong, seems to refer to an ancient Chinese mythological figure of the same name, who was a god of fire. There are some variants of the pistol only found in the Operation Anchorage DLC, where the pistols have a newer, cleaner appearance, but they can't be used by the player, and are only ever carried by Chinese soldiers but never used, including a Dragoon pistol that was cut and is identical to the simulation version. The pistol model is interesting because it has some writing on the side of the pistol. The characters indicate that the pistol was created in 1929, or more accurately, in the 18th year of the Republic of China calendar. That makes these pistols over 100 years old at the time of the Great War, so we have to ask ourselves, were the Chinese so hard up on resources that they were arming their forces with 100 year old gear? It's not beyond the realm of possibility, but that does seem desperate even by the standards of Fallout. In what is the only entry that is unique to Fallout 76, the Crusader Pistol is a unique weapon for a number of reasons. Added in the Steel Dawn update, it can only be crafted, so looting it somewhere isn't an option, but this unique looking pistol is tied to the Brotherhood somehow, perhaps being a weapon that they designed or adapted for their use, as their symbol is emblazoned on the sides. What is interesting about this weapon is that the receiver modifications, rather than just increasing damage or fire rate or durability, instead changes the damage type of this weapon. The base weapon is chambered in 10mm, but it can have a 5.56mm receiver swapped into it, vastly increasing its damage. But the 5.56mm is not all that common in Fallout 76, and unless one is running a pistol build, it could be put to better use elsewhere. What I find most interesting is that it has a cryo receiver, 
a fusion receiver and a pyro receiver, where the weapon uses fusion cells to do the associated energy damage. Each receiver clearly communicates the change since a cryo receiver has a cryo cell, the pyro has a cartridge of flamer fuel, and plasma has a fusion cell. The 5.56mm receiver may not be obvious, but the weapon design was actually inspired by both the 10mm pistol, which it shares a similar grip with, and the 5.56mm pistol from New Vegas, whose shape it kind of resembles, and we're going to talk about here soon. The damage of the 10mm version is double that of the normal 10mm pistol, but all the other stats are the same. It has fewer upgrades when compared to the 10mm, but the upgrades are a lot more diverse allowing the player to change the weapon's damage type to fit their need, which is really cool. I like to think of this as a Brotherhood-designed weapon that was based off the 5.56mm pistol that we know exists on the West Coast, and they further modified it to be extremely modular to fit any battle scenario. The ever-popular Colt 45 was first introduced in the series in Fallout Tactics, and was even planned for the cancelled Fallout Extreme, and looks just like the real-world weapon. Plans have been made to include it in the first Fallout, but that never materialized, and instead we see a Colt on the cover of the Guns and Bullets magazine in Fallout and Fallout 2. It is a solid weapon choice in the early to mid game doing between 12 to 18 damage, with decent range, and the ability for a triple shot, which really decreases effective range. The biggest issue with this weapon is the availability of the 45 caliber ammo, but it is worth keeping as a great sidearm, particularly when fighting in tight spaces. We see the Colt again in Fallout New Vegas, except now the pistol is called the 45 Auto Pistol, but it looks the same and fires the 45 Auto Round. It was introduced in the Honest Hearts add-on where Joshua Graham introduces it as being invented by a member of his tribe a long time ago. He is referring to John Moses Browning, the founder of the Browning Firearms Company, who made a number of famous and popular weapons, who, like Graham, was a Mormon. The pistol is very strong, having almost double the damage of the basic 9mm pistol, a faster rate of fire at the cost of a teensy bit more spread. As long as you have plenty of 45 auto rounds, it is a no-brainer, especially for a pistol build. It can accept two modifications, the heavy duty slide which increases the maximum condition by 50%, which ends up being really useful, and a silencer, enabling the weapon to become a holdout weapon when entering casinos, and benefit from more sneak criticals. The pistol uses luminescent sights that help out a lot in dark areas, like the myriad of caves in the Honest Hearts map, but those sights were actually meant to be a third optional upgrade until the developers just decided to have that option on the stock pistol. There are a few unique variants, the best of which is a light shining in darkness which was a personal firearm of Joshua Graham. It has a slightly different color, but most notably, he has rattlesnake pattern grips, a lightened trigger, and a scripture in Greek engraved on the slide, which is John 1.5, which says, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. It can be obtained either by killing Joshua and looting his corpse, or by looting a footlocker at the southern passage after completing the main DLC quest. It is the smallest pistol in the game, which may come as a surprise, but Joshua doesn't have to compensate for anything, and the size and subtle design changes make it most similar to the Colt New Agent pistol. It is a good deal better than the vanilla 45, doing more damage, having a higher rate of fire, having a higher critical multiplier, requiring less AP, having lower spread, and having higher item HP. Really the only thing that it isn't as good at is it has one less shot in the magazine, and doesn't have luminescent sights, but given all the other pros, I think that's perfectly acceptable. One interesting variant is Joshua's Pistol Weapon 45. Man, that's a long name. And it looks just like a light shining in darkness, which is another long name. But it is a melee weapon, and so when equipped by Joshua, he holds it by the slide so he can just start smacking white legs around. Joshua equips this when he is a temporary companion and is asked to use a melee weapon but he doesn't mess around with knives or any of that silly stuff. He just turns his pistol around and goes all blood atonement on everyone. Follow Chalk, the friendly member of the Dead Horse tribe that everyone likes to blast by accident at the beginning of the DLC, also has a unique 45 auto pistol that only he can use and utilizes the magical companion ammunition. 
One interesting thing is Joshua mentions that learning to use this pistol is a rite of passage for new Canaanites. Is this meant to mean that it is customary to gift such weapons as part of some coming of age ceremony, or are there new pistol related rituals as part of the religion? One detail I love is that the pistol was vaguely named precisely because Josh Sawyer wanted to sidestep any nitpicking and arguing related to the design, which borrows elements from a few different cult models. Man, does he know the online firearm community or what? Fallout tactics just can't be stopped and here we are with another one for one representation of a pistol, this time the P220 Sig Sauer. The pistol is pretty good, doing 7 to 15 base damage and chambered in 9mm which makes it less powerful than the Colt 45 but easier to find ammo for and has the option to fire single shot or triple. It can be found most readily at Peoria but can sometimes be found in merchants inventories. All right. Hold on to your butts for this next one because it's kind of interesting, but one of the most powerful conventional pistols in the first Fallout was the 14mm pistol. This retro futuristic pistol shoots a fat old round, the 14mm that is not a particularly common ammo type to come across. As such, it is a mid to late game weapon depending on the build, although it can really struggle against heavy armor and is best utilized with hollow points against enemies with weak or no armor. There's no great inspiration for the weapon's design, although it shares a suspicious number of attributes with a very unlikely pistol, the Hammerly 280, which fires the much more humble 22 long rifle round. The main similarities are the prominent wood grips and the small magazine in front of the trigger guard rather than going through the grip like so many other semi-auto pistols. It is interesting that in game, this is a Sig Sawa made weapon and as such it gets a 20% bonus chance to hit the target in a package that hits like a shotgun but has better range and magazine capacity. The pistol was included in Fallout 2 in exactly the same way, but a change to how Fallout 2 calculated damage done by armor piercing rounds along with dropping the 14mm hollow point rounds means that the weapon does half the damage it did in the first fallout, just making it a waste of time and valuable 14mm ammunition. Interestingly, this weapon is classified as a submachine gun in the game, so companions like Ian can use it, when normally they can't equip or use a pistol. This also means it uses the submachine gun sprite and reload animations as well. In the fallout demo, the 14mm pistol was included but was labeled the SS Semi-Auto Pistol, which I can't figure out what that might mean, and if you'd know, I'd love to hear it in the comments. What makes the 14mm interesting is that it appears next in Fallout New Vegas, but this time it is chambered in a totally different round. The 12.7mm pistol is supposedly the same Sig Sauer, and we can assume that it was just a different model that was chambered in the slightly slimmer 12.7mm. The 12.7mm hits really hard, doing 40 base damage with a very competitive rate of fire and AP cost, but it's really held back by a few things. The first is how rare and expensive the 12.7mm ammo is, the accuracy is quite lacking at 1.1, which for comparison, 0.7 is a bit better than average for pistols, and has a high strength requirement at 7, and gun skill at 75 to use effectively. I think that makes sense given how large the ammunition is for this beast, but I think the in-game model was also reimagined really well for New Vegas's 3D world. A surprising addition is the option for one upgrade to the pistol, and that is a silencer, which gives all the benefits that silenced weapons bring, although this is not a holdout weapon even with the silencer. Given how powerful this weapon is, it can be found in a surprisingly high number of locations and there is one unique variant known as Lil Devil. And no, that's not a mumble wrapper. Added with the Gunrunner's arsenal, it is a gunmetal gray color and the wooden grip was swapped out for a black composite or rubber one. It is such a massive upgrade over the vanilla 12.7mm <laughs> that it's kind of ridiculous. It does more damage, has a higher rate of fire, a higher critical multiplier, lower AP, lower spread, more item HP, and it is considered an improved holdout weapon, which not even the silenced 12.7mm is. 
The cap value is also pretty ridiculous, since the Little Devil is four times the value of the vanilla weapon, but it does require one more point to strength to use effectively. The Little Devil is seriously stacked. It can be bought from the special inventory of Mick and Ralph. One note I find interesting was that Josh Sawyer deliberately chose to switch the ammo type from 14mm to 12.7 since he thought the gun enthusiasts would understand that that meant the pistol fired the equivalent of the 50 caliber Action Express round, which was popularized by our real world buddy, the Desert Eagle. Fallout Tactics lets players easily encounter and use the 9mm M9FS Beretta, modeled and named after the real world firearm. The in-game description states that it was a popular firearm in the Fallout world, and as a result is very easy to find in-game. It does respectable damage, between 8 and 15, and a higher than average capacity at 15. Really, everything else is pretty similar to other pistols chambered in 9mm, and it can be a good sidearm for anyone in your squad, and the player's squad mates will start with this in their inventory. Fallout Brotherhood of Steel rears its ugly head once again, because a Beretta is one of the possible pistols that the user can find. It does okay damage for the early game, but can also be dual wielded for double the damage. Being an early game weapon, it is only found at the beginning stage which is carbon, and can be purchased from vendors or looted from lockers. It's hard to tell what kind of Beretta it is specifically because the models aren't that great, but it does seem similar to the popular M9 we see in Tactics. A Beretta pistol was also meant to show up in the cancelled Fallout Extreme, but it's only mentioned in the design documents. Alright, let's end this list with the biggest and baddest of the bunch, kind of, and one that has some good pop culture references. The 223 pistol was introduced in the first Fallout and has the distinction of being the most damaging, farthest shooting, and most penetrating pistol of all the non-energy weapon pistols. Due to this, it also has a pretty low capacity, but surprisingly, the AP cost is not that bad. As the name suggests, this pistol fires the 223 round, which is the exact same cartridge that the hunting rifle and sniper rifle uses. This is because this weapon was uniquely made by a farmer named Irwin, and it started life out as a rifle that was chambered in 223. This one of a kind weapon was created when he decided to cut down the rifle and modify it into a pistol, making it the one pistol to rule them all. Irwin will give it to the player if they help him kill the raiders that have taken over his farm, which is an interesting choice because, uh, Irwin, how are you going to keep any other raiders away if you just gave away your gun? Also in dialogue, he specifically says that he is giving us a rifle, and then he gives us a pistol that used to be a rifle, so he's kind of right, I guess? I don't know. What's interesting is this pistol must have gained the attention of others because by the time Fallout 2 takes place much later, it isn't a one-of-a-kind weapon anymore, it can be bought from a number of vendors and looted off of enemies' bodies. Because of the way that ammo types were changed in Fallout 2, the 223 FMJ rounds were made armor-piercing, giving the pistol excellent armor-defeating capabilities. That paired with the weapon penetration perk that it already has means it can deal good damage to even the most heavily armored targets. The weapon is not inspired by any real-world design, rather it is a nearly identical copy of the LAPD 2019 blaster pistol from the Blade Runner movie. Although the blaster was chambered in 44 and not 223, the resemblance is obvious, especially with the telltale double trigger configuration and the two red lights just below the barrel. The weapon was meant to be included in Interplay's Fallout 3 that was never completed, but according to the game files that were mined from the tech demo, it would have looked drastically different from the original design. Never fear though, because Fallout New Vegas brought the 223 pistol back, and it is a unique pistol known as that gun. Technically, it fires 5.56mm instead of 223, and does 30 base damage with a 2.5 critical multiplier and good accuracy, but requires a strength of 6 and gun skill of 50 to make it a strong pistol. It differs slightly in looks to the previous 223 and the Blade Runner pistol that served as inspiration. They dropped the second trigger, but I probably should have covered this in my revolvers video because this is just a super fancy revolver. The cylinder pops out on reload and it auto ejects the spent casings with the status lights under the barrel changing color based on if it needs to be reloaded or not. After a successful reload, there's also a high pitched recharging sound that can be heard. Only a single one can be found, like in the first Fallout, in the little settlement of Novak 
in the Dino Bite gift shop where it can be bought or stolen. Why can it only be found there? The reason it is called that gun is because according to Josh Sawyer, the 223 pistol in Fallout and Fallout 2 was referred to by many fans as that gun, and he wanted to carry on that tradition. A unique aspect of this weapon is that with the Gunrunners add-on, we get the option to buy non-unique versions of that gun, which are just called 5.56mm pistols. The 5.56mm are just a bit inferior to that gun, doing less damage, having lower critical multipliers, slightly higher spread, and lower durability. That said, you can buy multiple 5.56mm pistols at the Gunrunners Vendortron and many other random merchants. Visibly, it differs only in that the color is black instead of gray, but the 5.56mm pistol is considered a holdout weapon where that gun is not. Both weapons can fire 223 ammunition for a damage penalty if you don't have 5.56mm and is my favorite of the conventional pistols in Fallout New Vegas. And that is it, my rad people. What is your favorite pistol from the Fallout series or maybe from each game? Thank you for making it this far. And thank you to my patrons and YouTube members who help this channel continue to produce Fallout content. Online content is about all we got until Fallout 5 comes out in 20 years. But if you would like to show some appreciation and help me out, there are links in the description. Or just come and chat in the Discord server. Take care of yourselves. You play an important role in Adam's plan. Take care of others, and I will see you soon.